In podcast episode number 63, I talked to the running physio, Tom Goom. Tom is a physiotherapist from the UK, specialized in lower limb rehab and of course running. He started his popular website running-physio.com 12 years ago and is very active on social media where you might have seen some of his infographics or blogs. He has written for different high-profile running magazines and published in the Journal of Orthopedic and Sports Physical Therapy about proximal hamstring tendinopathy. In this episode, however, we will zoom in on medial tibial stress syndrome, abbreviated as MTSS. To start out, Tom defined MTSS as a bone stress injury in which the medial part of the tibia is reacting to excessive load. Pain is explained by unrepaired micro damage accumulation when the bone can't quite adopt to the load of the sport. MRI imaging might show up with features like periosteal inflammation and bone marrow edema. Tom then summarized the risk factors to develop MTSS, which are a higher BMI, increased navicular drop, increased weekly running mileage, and gluteal weakness. Some of these factors are more often described in women. It is then also no surprise that the typical patient with MTSS is a female, often in her 20s or 30s, who is a runner or military recruit. As a follow-up, we talked about training mistakes that may lead to MTSS. Tom explained that a sudden increase in running pace or volume and an increased demand on the calf muscles are factors to take into consideration. A higher load on the calves might come from uphill running or switching to minimalist shoes. He also stressed that minimalist shoes themselves are not a problem, but the problem is often the sudden change to a different type of shoe. Furthermore, he emphasized that we need to look at every runner individually to determine which factors could potentially contribute to their condition. We then moved on to screening and talked about red flags. The red flag to consider are anterior tibial stress fractures which present with pinpoint shin pain, which is more anterior than MTSS, which tends to be more spread out as well. A second red flag is exertional compartment syndrome, which presents with anterolateral shin symptoms around the tibialis anterior. Symptoms in compartment syndrome build up with continued running and settle quickly at rest, whereas MTSS is aggravated by impact. We then dove deeper into the signs and symptoms of MTSS. Tom explained that MTSS presents as posteromedial tibial tenderness to palpation in an area of more or less 5 cm and it worsens with impact and settles with rest. It can also be aggravated by prolonged weight bearing and there might be swelling as well. We then dove deeper into the signs and symptoms of MTSS. Tom explained that MTSS presents as posteromedial tibial tenderness to palpation in an area of 5 cm or more that worsens with impact and settles with rest. It can also be aggravated by prolonged weight bearing and there might be swelling as well. During his history taking, Tom stressed the importance of determining the patient's current tolerance level. Again, he highlighted that we need to ask about any changes in training to identify potential causes. He also evaluates a patient's diet and energy availability, sleep and stress levels. In terms of assessment, Tom explained that he's briefly looking at foot pronation and strength of the shock observers such as the quads, calves and the glute meats. Usually he takes the hamstrings into account as well. He's also assessing ankle flexibility, movement control like balance and single leg dip and finishes with impact testing where he would, for example, start with running on the spot and if tolerable, progress to jumping, bounding and hopping to figure out the patient's current tolerance. When it comes to running analysis, Tom videotapes his runners on a treadmill and over ground and uses slow-mo software to pick up the details. He's mainly looking at two different styles that put more stress on a medial tibia. One is overstriding, which often happens in runners with a low step rate, and the other one is a narrow stride width, which is commonly seen in runners with an increased pelvic drop 
and hip adduction. Eventually, we focused on treatment for MTSS. First, Tom elaborated that optimal loading for bone injuries should be pain-free during and after exercise. So you want to find a pain-free level of loading for a couple of weeks to let symptoms settle. If running or their sport is not possible at all, you would want to recommend a break and replace it with cross-training to keep them fit. At the same time, strength and conditioning work is prescribed to strengthen the muscles, but also to load the bone. Generally, you want to strengthen the muscles that showed weakness during your assessment, but a major focus is placed on the calf complex as the shock absorbers of the ankle and the foot. Tom usually prescribes about three exercises, of which one or two are for the calves, and the other ones are for the quads and glutes at a target of 10 reps max. We briefly touched on the biopsychosocial approach, and in my opinion, Tom said something noteworthy. He said, I always think you get the best results with someone when you get to know them as a person. And yes, that is biopsychosocial, but it's a little bit more than that. I think this is really something uh, that stuck with me because it is a very simple way of applying the biopsychosocial approach without making it too complex. We also had a brief discussion about exercise prescription for the tibialis anterior muscle that is often recommended online. Tom argues that you rather want to focus on muscles that manage high peak loads in running and the tibialis anterior isn't one of them. It's mostly active during the terminal swing phase and less active during the loading phase. By the way, Tom mentioned that he does not use any adjunct treatments as the evidence for them is sparse and because pain often settles rather quickly when you offload a patient for a couple of weeks. Towards the end of the podcast, we talked about the criteria Tom uses in return to running decision making. These are walking for half an hour without any pain, no night pain symptoms and no swelling before you move on to your impact tests. During those, a patient must be able to jog on a spot for one minute and to be able to hop for at least 10 reps on each leg pain-free. At last, he has a patient do a test run that he caps after three to five minutes and he builds it up from there, if that run went fine. Finally, we discussed the differences in runners in comparison to other athletes. Tom explained that your exercise selection needs to be targeted to the demand of the sport. In soccer, for example, he would focus more on the adductors to account for change of direction and the hamstrings, which are a commonly injured muscle group. In volleyball, which was our other example in the podcast, the plyometric demand is much higher than in running. So you would have to implement exercises that replicate the demands of volleyball. All right, so this was a brief summary of podcast episode 63 on MTSS with running physio Tom Goom. I hope I could raise your curiosity to listen to the whole episode and to learn more about MTSS. If you would like to have more resources, download our free PhysioTutors app and get access to the transcript and infographic. As always, thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in another video. Bye.